Yo boys, we're going to begin into a video where Samsung explains his top 10 exercises he thinks are the best for each muscle group. And we're going to see whether we agree or disagree. You got to pick 10 exercises for the rest of your life. This is a popular thing with the, the top 10. The top 10. Yeah, top exactly. 10. Let's hear the Sam Sulek top 10 exercise. You can only pick 10. Where are we going? Yeah, I feel like I just did this, so I might be saying the same thing over again. That's okay. New but audience. I might just have to pick one per muscle group because you know, any real lifter isn't going to neglect any specific part of their body because they want to get huge all around. I've heard him say this before. No real lifter is going to you know, neglect any part of the body. However, I think most of us train for the way we feel in the gym, not for the way we look, which is why we go to the gym so often, which is why we can stay consistent for so many years because I don't necessarily go to the gym because I am expecting to look a certain way. I go to the gym because of the feeling of training. I love pushing myself. I love the feeling of getting under a really heavy weight. That gets me fucking excited. I I really love the feeling of a pump. I love the feeling of being scared of a weight. That gets, that just makes me feel alive, right? I'm pretty sure that Sam has said this himself. Maybe to a certain point, if you're a bodybuilder, I would agree you're a serious lifter. You wouldn't neglect a part of your body. However, if we train for the way we feel, there are going to be some muscles that we might not particularly care about. For example, I have absolutely no interest in training my calves. Shoot me if you want. I train absolutely everything else. That is just the one muscle group I just can't get behind. I don't care. I personally think that the appearance of a big calf, if I have a smallish, medium type calf, I think it makes the leg like flow up up and appear larger up top. You can disagree with me, but that's just my opinion. Leg extensions, hamstrings, leg curls. Pretty interesting choice because those aren't compound movements. This goes against, you know, common knowledge, essentially. Like what you, what you would say, if you're only gonna do one movement for your legs, what would you do? I would probably say a squat of some kind, right? Whether it's a hack squat, whether it's a barbell squat, whether it's a pendulum squat, whatever you might choose, I would probably pick a squat over a leg extension. I would probably even choose a leg press over a leg extension. I think a leg, a leg extension is very limited. Not only is it limited in terms of loading, but also how much bang you get for your buck, right? If we're gonna compare doing four sets of squats of any kind, it doesn't matter because a squatting pattern, it just has to agree with you, right? As long as you can get into it and you can progress the overload, it doesn't actually matter. But a squatting pattern is gonna build your whole leg, right? You're talking adductors, we're talking quads. It's not gonna really do much to your hamstrings, but it's gonna do some to your glutes as well. I would choose a squat variation. Personally, I would choose a barbell squat. I don't get along with hack squats. I don't get along with pendulum squats. I also can't get behind it. Like the feeling that I get from a barbell squat is just, it's just, it's just something else. It's another level. It's the, it's you're scared to go up there. It's, it's heavy, it's gritty, it's something else. A hack squat is all right, right? It's still, you're still heavy weights, but it's more of a bodybuilder. I don't know how people get behind it that much. Uh, but a leg extension? Nah, to my opinion, pretty poor choice. For the hamstrings, a laying hamstring curl, I think I would probably agree. That's probably in the top two exercises up there. The reason I say that is because an RDL smashes so many other areas that it's not really a hamstring exercise per se. It's not biasing the hamstrings so much, right? If you're gonna do so many sets of RDLs to target your hamstrings, you're gonna end up a fried central nervous system because you need quite a bit of weight on an RDL to feel anything. And you're also gonna end up with cooked uh, lower back. And now you might say, hey, Dave, you said just squat. You might just do a barbell squat. The barbell squat is fine. Your, most humans can do barbell squats even every single day. And your spine and stuff isn't going to be that cooked. As opposed to an RDL or even a deadlift. Some might say, like, that's going to be better for your hamstrings. Your, your spine is going to be destroyed. And so is your central nervous system. Whereas the squat just seems to be a movement that agrees with humans more. The laying down hamstring curl or even a seated hamstring curl. I would agree with Sam. That's probably up there with the top hamstring movements. Chest. Incline dumbbell bench. I would say an incline dumbbell bench is top three, yeah? I personally would choose a barbell bench press just due to the loading you can have on it, right? There is a lot of room for progressive overload and it's easy to see. It's also a movement that, like I said, you can get behind, right? You can get behind a heavy fucking bench press. Lay down, make sure you're nice retracted, your shoulders are back and you're not gonna injure yourself. Whereas with the dumbbells, it becomes a bit fucky, right? So personally, I would say a flat barbell bench press would be my number one exercise. But number two exercise, close second, either a flat dumbbell press or an incline dumbbell press is absolutely amazing because you get the converging as well, right? Bicep curls, tricep pushdowns. It's pretty standard, whether it's dumbbell, whether it's easy curl bar, the straight bar will fuck your wrists up, right? Usually, like most people aren't built to use a straight bar, that's why an easy curl bar exists. Easy curl bar or dumbbells, absolutely amazing. For triceps, top exercise, he said tricep extensions, which I assume is just a straight bar push down, which I would probably agree with. There's no need to mess around with ropes. You can switch it up every now and then. There's no perfect exercise, but the tricep extension with a straight bar or even like an easy curl type bar, I would agree with, it's pretty good. Lateral raises. 
I would probably choose, if I was going to build my shoulders, if I had one exercise to choose, the top exercise to choose, it would have to be a dumbbell or a machine shoulder press. There's just not much to a lateral raise, right? You're going to build your side delts, fine. If you do a full range of motion shoulder press, not this half repping like stuff that people do that you see online, they're like barely doing this. Yeah, that's just going to sort of hit your front delt, maybe. If you do a full range of motion shoulder press with dumbbells, it's going to hit all three heads of your shoulders. Like it's just going to develop your shoulder completely. A lateral raise just isn't going to do that. Rear lateral raises. I would say for rear delts, it's either that or a machine rear delt exercise. Really good. What I found worked really well were face pulls on the cables with a rope where you can actually progressively overload. Really good, right? A face pull is probably going to be a really good exercise because you also get that internal and external rotation of the shoulder, which is going to keep your shoulders nice and healthy. I would choose a face pull any day of the week. What am I missing? Back, lat pull downs, rows. What kind of rows? Oh, well, seated cable rows. Okay. And I've got room for one more. I agree with him on the lap pull downs. I think a lap pull downs are a great exercise. You can sit down, you're very stable, and there's a lot of room for progressive overload. And you can also switch up the grips, which you can hit your back however you like. It's absolutely fantastic, amazing. Seated cable rows, I would switch that seated cable row to a chest supported row. On a cable row, you're gonna have to get your you know lower back involved a little bit. It can be a bit janky sometimes as well. Whereas on a T-bar row, you're locked in, your chest is supported, and all you're doing is just doing a horizontal pull. There's loads of room for press of overload. I would choose that over the cable row any day of the week. I'm sure you would expect another actual weight lifting movement, but as important as all those are, that has to be coupled with the cardio bike. The seated cardio bike, that'd be the last one. He threw the cardio in. Cardio is number 10. <laughs> Highly neglected. Recumbent bike at that too. Yeah. I would absolutely agree. I think people neglect doing cardio. And myself, even on a bulk, I would say that I put cardio off. Like I would only ever do cardio at the absolute later stages of my bulk, which I know you can shoot me for, okay? I'm not perfect. I would do at the later stages of my bulk in order to help digestion. When you're deep in a bulk, when I was deep in this bulk and I was trying to get up to what? I got up to 225 pounds at five foot 10. I was getting in 5,200 calories. It was getting so difficult that walks just had to be done. I just had to do them. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to, you know, get the food down. It was just like a meal, digestion walk, boom, you know, you can actually get the calories in. Cardio, really important. When I'm doing a maintenance phase or when I'm doing a cutting phase, I just do cardio. 20 minutes after your training session. I know it just sounds like jarring concept to do 20 minutes, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's going to keep your heart healthy. It's actually going to help you do more at the gym. You're going to have more work capacity if you do cardio after your training sessions. And the reason why I say after your sessions, not before your sessions, is because you want to prioritize weightlifting because you need the most energy for that. And then if you're going to do cardio, you should do it after your training session because you just don't need that much energy output for cardio unless you're doing hit cardio, which is a whole different can of worms. We're talking about steady state cardio, it's nice and slow, you know, just getting your heartbeat up there and not going crazy. Speaking of getting your heartbeat crazy, Overdrive is back in stock. If you want to pick a tub up, if you use code YouTube, you're going to get a little discount. There's three flavors. There's sweet lemon, there's watermelon, there's blue raz. There's 375 milligrams of caffeine here. Slow and fast acting. We've got 600 milligrams of alpha GPC, six grams of pure L-citrulline, beta alanine. So you're going to get those tingles. We've got extra stimulants in there. Try it out. It is one of the best pre-workouts on the market in the UK. You can check out the reviews. They're absolutely golden. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you check out Overdrive.